Okay, everyone. So let's begin with our sketch. So what I want you to try is um, with this teacup, we can put it anywhere on our page. So maybe we'll start with one that's kind of in the middle. So a central one here. Okay, so um, how do we want to do this? I think I'll start with the body of the, the object. I'll turn this back on. That's better. Okay, so I'll start with the body of the object. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe I'll do it a little bit darker. Again, remember, if you have trouble drawing round shapes like circles or ovals, you can also do lines like this, straight lines, and then you can round off those corners. So make that pointy part round. This part doesn't matter too much just because we have to go in again anyway with our paint. So just do a quick rough sketch. So um, this one's really, really round. I think I want my teapots to be a little bit all different sizes, just to make it uh, more interesting. So then we'll do the cap here. The cap, start over here. So I'll follow the curve like the bottom part. So this curve will match the bottom one here and then I can round it off. It's up to you if you wanna add the rim around this teapot or not. So that would just be this, uh, this rim of the lid. So something like this. And then of course, the bottom. If you want to make both sides more symmetrical, if you don't care, that's fine because this one's a little bit funny looking anyway. But if you want to make both sides symmetrical, you can draw a line down the middle and then that will help you uh, do these additions right here. So for example, this, or maybe you wanna add another line in the middle. Okay, and then let's do the little spout here. So we'll do a circle. And then very round.
the spout and then the handle. Oops, I think I did this. Oh, it's like this. Okay, so up here and then under this, it folds around. So this is our basic pot. And then you can decide where you want to put your other pots. So for example, you can put one right here. You can put one up here. Um, it's kind of interesting to have them overlap. So I'm going to put a very long one right here. So again, I'm following the same um, procedure. So I'm going to start with the body of the pot. I kind of want it like a eggplant shape almost. So I'll start with like this. I don't think that's even. Bring it down a little bit more. And bring it in. There we go. Um, I have an eraser. You. So it's better not to erase canvas. You can just leave the pencil mark on there. But I, I want to erase this um, so people can see that one more clearly. Okay, and let's do the top little, um, what is this called? lid. So follow the bottom. Round off the top. Add this uh, a little a little handle, and then we will add the spout. So I think for this one, let's put the spout behind the object. So we try something a little bit goofy. What if we put it here? And we can put the handle over here. It's 
canvas, it doesn't erase very well. Maybe we want, um, yeah, let's put it here. And for balance, I want a pot right here. So I'm going to make a pot maybe here. And this pot, um, hmm. So I got one long one, one medium one. Uh, I'll just do a bigger one. So I'm going to put it here. So you don't have to follow me. You can put these anywhere. Oh, you know what? We could have done a square pot or a rectangle teapot. Those ones are quite interesting. A more rectangle, uh, what's that called? It's like a cylinder shape. Mm -hmm. That's another idea for you. Okay, so that's going to be a pretty big pot. Okay. <clears throat> Up to you again, where you want to put the handle. I kind of want to put it here. Give a super uh, curvy handle over here. So. Start at the bottom and make our way up. Or this is a spout, sorry, it's not a handle. We'll get to do a flat top. And then we'll just drag that line right there. And then we got to do our handle this time. So maybe it's really big. I don't know. Mm 
And then I want to add my top part here. And then, of course, don't forget this rim. So yours doesn't have to look like mine. Um, yours can look however you want it to look. So I'm going to erase this line. Okay. So one thing I want to show you is if we look at this, these lines, see these straight lines, they cut downwards. And this, this line is what allows us to put in two different colors. It makes it a lot more interesting. So we'll do the same for ours. They even have a diagonal line here. <coughs> So we can do the same thing on ours. So what we can do is draw a couple of lines. I'll just use this straight edge. You can use a ruler or a paper or you can freehand it. So let's start over here, maybe anywhere. So anywhere over here, Go ahead and grab your straight edge. Uh, I think I put mine, I think I wanna put it here. So grab your straight edge and anywhere over here, what you're gonna do is just draw a line down. So it is your choice whether you want to go through or not, right? You can see here, some of the lines go through the object. So this goes right through the teapot, but this one, this line, it goes through a little bit and then it stops. So it doesn't go through this part. This part is all the teapot. So it's up to you in order to get this um, very interesting effect. You can choose to have the line go through the object or no. So choose, it's up to you what you wanna do. So this time I'll have it, see, I've done this. So I've had the line and it goes through this one, but not this one. So you can choose uh, however you want to do it is okay. And then let's add some more lines everywhere. So this one, I'm gonna make it more narrow. And I'll have it, um, I, I, I'll have it not go through. I don't want it to go through this at all.
the next one I'll put here, maybe. And I want it to, yeah, let's have it go through this entire thing. Why don't we do that? We'll cut through it, all of it. Hmm. Maybe we should cut through all of it except for the front two part. That might be cool. So I cut through all of it and I'll leave this front one. So I'll leave that one. So I'm not going to add any more lines here that go like this because this is very busy. So making a painting like this is not actually random. You actually, you need to think about um, how busy each area is. For example, we added a line through this, this part because there's not much happening. But we left, we'll leave this whole part clear because there's a lot happening. So we'll leave that entire area and begin our lines over here. So you really have to think about how am I going to um, compose this? And then one here. And maybe we'll have this one. Maybe we'll have this one cut a little bit in. So it can cut a little bit in. Uh, and then maybe it'll stop right there or something. If you want, you can add this diagonal line. It, it's pretty cool because it shows the table. So you can add a diagonal line in there. All up to you, of course. So the diagonal line is interesting. Right, because it, it, it will look like almost you have a table behind when you don't. And we'll just add a couple more up here um, because it's very empty. I'll do that. And we'll do this. I really like the whatever they've done with the table back there. I want to include that in my painting. So, um, so what they've done is create another diagonal line, parallel to this one. And then what they've done is a straight line. And there's no no really rhyme or reason to why why they did it like this. It just looks very interesting. Okay, and then maybe you want maybe you want to do the same thing. You don't have to do the diagonals over here, but you can if you want. So I'm gonna add. Um, I just want this table edge to come all the way across, like here. So that I have a strong, strong looking table. So Let's give everybody a couple more minutes to play with the way that this looks, right? And then after, I'll show you how to paint this. This painting is very interesting. It only uses four colors. So you have green, pink, uh, gold, and black. That's all it uses. So they're only using four 
colors to make this. Hmm, kind of want to go all the way across here, but I don't think it will. Yeah, we'll cut a bit across here because this is too empty. It's super, super empty. So I'm going to continue this line. the way up here and then we'll go ahead and cut it so we'll cut that across and stop right there so you don't want anywhere to look um, too empty so the way you can think about this is each section is its own color. So for example, look between the lines. Just pretend like you're coloring. Now this becomes a coloring project. So this will be its own color. Um, this, this shape right here will be its own color. This shape right here, all of this can be one color. So that's why you don't want, um, like for example, here you have a huge area and it's this is all going to be one color. Oops, this one is not, this, this line is not part of this, I don't think. Um, or this one, let's get rid of this one. So after this, it just becomes a coloring project. Wherever you have your lines, so this right here, I'll show you, this right here, this shape here is going to be its own color. And at this point, what you can do is maybe you want to add something. So maybe you want to cut a line across or do something here so that it's not so empty. So maybe, I don't know if I want to cut that across. I'm not sure what to do with this big empty space. Maybe we'll just let it be empty. That's okay as well. You can add the signs onto your onto your pots to make them a little bit more fun. So maybe you want to add a little leaf design, or you want to add a little flower or something. You can do whatever you want. <clears throat> so we can see each each little section um, will be its own color. So I need to figure out what's happening here. It looks to be this line. There's a line here. And it continues down here. So you can see, right? Here, in this very busy area, we have many sections. So this is going to be one color, a different color. You see, it's going to be uh, a bunch of colors all in this area, very busy.
Ah, I keep drawing this line back in. Oops. I don't want this line. Okay. So something like this. For this one, it's it's a better um, to make your lines a little bit more clear. You'll go over it with paint, but this way it's less confusing for you. So when you actually go to paint, it'll be a little bit less uh, confusing. Okay. So you can pick any four colors and any four colors will work. It doesn't matter what four colors you choose. Today, I think I'm going for, um, I don't know what I'm going for today. Maybe a summer, a summer look a summer painting. So you will squeeze out four colors, any four colors. I'm gonna do yellow. So I will do yellow. I will have a bit of white in my yellow. I will do, um, what color should I do? Purple because I love this purple. This is my favorite purple. It's purple, I'll put it in my purple. Full container side. Okay, they've used black, but I'm going to use purple. And I think I'll use pink and I'll use a bit of green. So I'll we'll use pink. So pink, I have pink, you can use any color, pink, purple, yellow, and green. I really like. Uh, I use this one or this one thing? Yes. Who is talking? Does any do you have a question? Sorry, I didn't catch it. Which one I use? Can you tell me? So please? I'm using I'm using pink, purple, um, yellow, and I'm also using green. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what color you use. You can use any four colors. You can even use five. You can use four. It doesn't, it, or you can use three, it doesn't matter. This one will not matter. 
So let me add some white to that. It's up to you, you can choose. Beyond this, it, it becomes a coloring project. So um, it will look good no matter what you choose. Okay. So now, now I can begin my coloring. And um, what this is gonna look like is pretty much, I, I just wanna put my colors anywhere. It doesn't matter. So I will start with, I guess green, cause it's on here already. Think of it like, uh, let's think of it like adult coloring, adult coloring book. So you've made your coloring uh, page already and now you just have to color it. There's not much technique to this one. So you're gonna take your color and start placing it in anywhere. The idea is you want to stay within those lines. You see those lines? You want to stay within that range. So you can put your color and just try to stay within this range. So stay, try to stay within these confines. Oops, if you go out, it's okay. Just your, your next color will cover it. So it doesn't matter too much, but just try to stay as close as possible. So you're trying to stay in there, right? And then you take your color and you put it anywhere else. So maybe I want to put my green here in this, in this uh, spout.
So try your best to keep it in the lines. Usually we, we, we really like when <clears throat> we try messy things, but this time, this one's a little bit different. This today's project is a little bit different than those ones. And I want this to be, I want this to be green. So the idea is you try to space it out so you don't have green right beside green. So if this is green, maybe don't paint this green too or you won't be able to see it. But you can put it anywhere else. So I, I, I encourage you don't to not copy what I'm doing. But this time instead, you can experiment with where you put the colors. And maybe I want, so maybe I want this, one of these, <laughs> these little squares to be green. Uh, I'll probably have to switch to a smaller brush. So I want that square to be green. I, I do need to switch to a smaller brush so I can actually color it in. If you find your paint is too sticky, you can add some water so that it, uh, it, it flows better. And then maybe I want to do one here. So I'll, I want to make a little triangle of green right in there. You might need to use some water, especially if you uh, got the bags of paint that I gave to May. That paint is quite, quite thick, it's quite nice. So you may need to add some water to get it to flow into those uh into those little little spaces that I want green here. So you can see I'm just looking at the lines and putting the color in in the little in the little lines. Okay, and maybe I want to put it right here. So you can see this shape ends here. Okay, so this shape ends there. I want. Mm. I want to do this part green. So this kind of works in a way that anything will work. Green. And 
of course. This bottom one, I think uh, I'm just going to leave it for now. I, I don't want that green, actually. Okay. More green. I think I'm going to go this one. This strip will be green. This, the straight lines will be easier if you have uh, one of those flat brushes. So it, the flat brush kind of looks like a square. This one's a little bit angled. So if you have a brush like flat, you can just go ahead and drag, drag that line down. And I think that's all the green I want on this today. Okay. Now I will move on to the next color. Actually, you know what? We will do this tiny spot right here green as well. So I'll grab my green paint. And do this part right here. Now I get to wash my brush. So I'm doing that right now. Okay, now that we've done that, um, I want to move on to purple. Because I just really like purple. So for purple, because it's my darkest color. So because it is my darkest color, I'm gonna use it almost like a black. So first I'm going to fill in these little spouts. So it's gonna show up very dark, almost like a black. I recommend you use your darkest color. Maybe your darkest color is not purple, but it's blue. So I recommend you use your, your darkest color Uh, use your darkest color as your shadow. Okay. 
for my purple, I want most of my bottom table bar to be purple. So I want this part to be purple. And because this is a painting that you don't need the layering of the paint, you can feel free to add waters to make your paint last longer. Just because this one, we don't need to layer the paint on other colors, right? So you just need one color. Um, I'll probably go ahead and make all of the bottom here purple. So I really like this color. So I think what I'm going to do is, yeah, I'm going to make most of this purple. Forget the lines. And only because this in the in the reference picture, they've made the entire bottom black, and I think it looks pretty good. But we're not using black, we're using purple. You can use blue any color. Same with my other side here. So I want, I want it to be quite purple. Mm.
Oops, that's okay. Again, if it does that, that's okay. If it goes over, it's fine. Then you just cover it with the other color. Do this one. Okay, so um, that's kind of your table, right? So this is kind of our table and we want to add some more purple up here. I just really like purple to be honest. I wanna make one of these columns purple. I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be this one. So this is the column I'm gonna make purple. And I'm also going to make maybe the spout here purple and maybe some something over here. Okay, so So I'm gonna try to be a little bit careful in these corners. So I'll switching to my very skinny brush.
So maybe I want to make this red also purple. So just for the balance there. Mm, or here, this shape right here, actually. So I'm trying to balance it so that uh, I don't have too much of one color in one area. So maybe, mm, let's put it here, right in the middle here. And then I'll do this one right here, or we can also do that one. Um, hmm. That might be more balanced. I think we'll do this, this cap right here. Looking at this right now, I want to do this one purple. So I'm making it a little bit faster because you don't have a lot of time with these ones. Um, you will be able to finish it on your own though, because you know what to do now. So that's why I'm picking up the speed a little bit here. Okay, I'm almost done with my purple, my purpley purple base. I wanna do this one purple too. I just really like this color.
All right, let's move on to our last two colors here. So we have yellow and pink. After I get rid of the last bit of my purple, of course, I have a little bit more to do. So we move on. Let's do yellow first. I'm gonna mix my yellow with my white. That's a lot of heat. I squeezed out way too much. You do not need this much, but oh, so much heat. So after I've squeezed out um, a crazy amount of paint. Now I can start to put it on my canvas. really like the color combination of purple and yellow because the two are complementary so it looks very it's very cool let's do the lid Actually, no, let's do it yellow. Actually, I'll think about it. <laughs> let's do this part yellow, actually. So we'll do that, this part. We can do pink.
Let's do this back. Let's do this one. And we'll do, yep, no, this one yellow. And remember, it's okay if uh, nothing makes sense here. It's it's a bit of a color pop anyway. So if it turns out abstract, it's okay as well. I'm going to go ahead and do this one yellow. Ooh, oops. This happens a lot.
And after this, everything else can be pink. Okay, so we're almost done. Let's see if I can color everything pink in six minutes. All right, speed paint, let's go. Let's see if I can do it. Oh my goodness, excuse me. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna try to color everything pink, everything remaining white. I'm gonna try to color. Oh, this needs to be a different color. I just realized that. Uh, this, this might need to be purple, actually. So I'll leave that for now. Uh, because I just realized it will, it will not work. Oh, it's okay. We'll just go back and make it purple. I'm speeding. Speed.
Okay, I think the phone is almost done here. To be honest, I think I can also introduce another color like blue, and I might actually do that instead. So for all of these spaces that are clear right now, I might actually color them a different color. I think that would look better. You can, however, also leave them white. That's also okay. Um, yeah, I think that will look quite nice actually. So I might do that. So our class is officially done for today, but if you want to stick around, that's cool. If you don't, that's also cool. Um, I'm just gonna be finishing this one up.